Hello, I'm Reverend Craig from Gaming Reverence, and I would like to show you my PubSub system. The PubSub pattern lets objects communicate without knowing of each other by communicating with a controller object instead of talking to each other directly. So the object triggering an action, that's the publisher object, doesn't need to know what other objects, or if any other object at all, is interested and the objects waiting for a trigger, those are the subscriber objects, don't need to care about who is publishing. Imagine you let an object call another object directly and later you, you remove the second object or something in the game destroys it. If you missed a check for that second object before calling it, your game will crash. Or imagine you let objects communicate directly and later you change the name of a resource. The game is broken and you need to find all mentions of that resource in your code and change it. PubSub solves problems like these and I'll show you how it's used with this simple minigame. So as a starting point, I prepared a version without communication between any of the objects. So how, let's have a look at that first. You'll see uh, the player object, blue, following the mouse, and the enemy objects following the player objects. When they hit the player object, the player object should die and will reappear at the starting screen. You also see the Zion and uh, the magenta tokens. One is a power mode token, the other one is a slow mode token. A power mode token will make the player invincible so he's able to kill the enemies and the slow mode token is slowing down the enemies. Now let's look at the objects and implement the pop up system step by step. First one is the controller object. Every pub subsystem needs a controller object and uh, you need to initialize the system in this controller object with the function pub create. This will create a DS map storing lists which in return store subscriber objects and their uh, scripts. When you do a pub create you should also call pop destroy somewhere. In this case, we do it in room and just to prevent memory leaks. This pub destroy function will destroy the DS map and all DS lists involved in this pub subsystem. Uh, in this case, we're, we're also drawing a, a debug pub debug draw. And uh, you can actually call this from any other object you need to pass the controller object in this case it's the id because it's the same object but you could call it from your gui object if you have one and just write the uh, name of the controller object here and that's it for the controller object now the gui object the gui object is um, pretty simple too there's some variables we need for visual feedback, not part of the PubSub system. Here is the PubSub uh, stuff. The GUI object is interested in three things, really. Whether the player is in power mode, the enemies are in uh, slow mode, or the enemy died, so the score goes up. Those are the three things the GUI object is interested. It's going to be a visual feedback for that. So what happens here? Um, the GUI object in a create event subscribes to these three topics. The controller will be the same object, the controller object we looked at earlier. And it also tells what script should be run once a publisher publishes these topics. Uh, and the scripts are pretty straightforward, just changing the variables of the GUI object, same with the slow mode here, and pretty much the same with the score mode, uh, the score script. It will just add to the score 
with a factor defined by the alarm. Pretty simple and straightforward. Not part of the pops up system. Now the enemy object is really simple too. We do pretty much the same as with the GUI object. The enemy object is interested in the topics slow mode as the GUI object and power mode. It actually even runs the same script because as we have seen the script just changes the value of power mode is on and the enemy object is using the exact same um, variables. So it's interested in slow mode and power mode. It tells so the controller object and it tells what scripts to run. Now in this case if we look at the scripts again, its power mode is on is automatically referring to the enemy object, whereas when it's called for the GUI object, power mode is on is referring to the GUI object. So it's not a variable of the controller object, it's not a variable of the publisher object. The variables in the scripts being called are always um, referring to the subscriber object. In uh, the step event, we just have some movement code. And uh, draw event, we just have the drawing code. Nothing to do with the pub sub system. However, in this destroy event, we do have something part of the pub sub uh, system. When the enemy gets destroyed, it will publish score to the controller object. The controller object will go through a list with all subscribers to the topic score and will run their scripts. So um, the, only, the only object that subscribed to score was the GUI object. So whenever an enemy object gets destroyed and the controller object tells the GUI object to run the script um, score this code here will happen the score will get increased by this formula and the factor will get increased as well The other thing that happens here in the enemy destroy event is the enemy should unsubscribe from the topic so that the uh, controller object has to iterate, uh, iterate less often to the topics whenever a publisher calls something this enemy object is interested in. And it's actually interested in two things, slow mode and power mode. So that's why in the destroy event I used pub unsubscribe instance from all topics. You could also use the function pub unsubscribe and pass the topic here, which is actually quite a bit faster. So if you know exactly what topics the object is interested in, in this case we would know it exactly, we would know its power mode and slow mode. Um, you can just write two lines, pub, unsubscribe, and pass the uh, the two topics. I just use this to show you this function. And the last object we need to look into is the player object. Um, the player object is not subscribing to any topic. It's just purely a uh, publisher, not like the enemy object that was subscriber and publisher or the uh, GUI object that was just a subscriber. The enemy, uh, the player object is just a publisher. Um, so we don't subscribe to anything in the create event. We're just setting up the object itself. Um, the step event is just used for movement, I think. Yep. 
And um, let's do the easier ones. Object slow mode. On collision with the slow mode to uh, token, the slow mode token gets destroyed. An alarm for the duration of the slow mode is being set. And the topic slow mode is published to the PubSub controller. And um, it gets a bit more complicated here. This third argument, remove, as you see uh, down here, just tells that the, um, the subscriber list should stay intact because it's false. If you write true here, um, after publishing, the subscriber list gets emptied. And this fourth argument is actually an argument for the script. So let's do this with the slow mode and um, the GUI. So slow mode is published to the object controller. The object controller will go through the subscriber list of slow mode and will find the object GUI there. And let's look at the script. The object GUI will run this script. Slow mode is on equals to argument zero, zero. And that's a bit of an awkward way to write an argument. The reason why is pretty simple. Pub subsystem will take up to 12 arguments in the publish function and it will pass it to this script as an array. So this script can always only have argument zero, but that argument zero can be an array with up to 12 entries. So it would be, well, actually up to 13 entries from zero to 12. Now, since we're just passing one argument, which is true, that needs to be referred to as argument zero, brackets zero. If we would pass two arguments, like um, I'm just trying anything, let's say we need another argument for, we would write that as four equals to argument argument zero one. But we not, won't need it here, so I'm just going to delete it. Okay. In collision with slow mode, slow mode is published, and the slow mode script will be run with the argument true. The same happens with power mode. The power mode topic is published, the list, uh, the subscriber list will stay intact and the argument true will be passed to the script power mode. Now you see here, there's also a, an alarm being set. So let's look into that alarm, alarm zero in this case. When that alarm runs off, the same topic gets published again, power mode, this time with the argument false. So the GUI, for example, um, will run this code. Power mode is on is e argument zero zero. Argument zero zero is false. So power mode is on will be false again. So let's run the game with the pub subsystem on. The enemy object will chase the player object. The player object hits slow mode token and tells so the controller object. The controller object tells the GUI and the enemies. And you saw what happened. And the GUI gives visual feedback and the enemies slow down. After the alarm triggers, slow mode is published again and everything is back to normal. And when I uh, hit the power mode token, uh, the player object tells the controller object, 
controller object informs the GUI object about that. Uh, so the GUI object can give a visual feedback. And uh, when I'm on power mode, I can actually kill the enemies. When they get destroyed, they will tell the pub sub controller object. The pub sub controller object will inform the GUI object to update the score. So this is going to be a bit boring. Voila. And that's it. The pub sub system is actually quite easy to use. It is very, very practical, especially if an object or many objects need to be informed simultaneously about something that just happened. It's not very useful if, for example, let's say in a collision event, only those two involved objects need to be informed because you can just write that inside the collision event. There's no need for a uh, pops up system there. But if you need to inform the GUI, it already makes kind of sense. And if you need to inform the achievement system and any other systems you have, it gets very much easier with a system like a pops up system. So I hope you like the pops up design pattern. I hope uh, you like the system I created with that pattern. Uh, try it out, download it. If you like it, rate it. If you have questions, ask on the marketplace or here on the YouTube channel um, or just write a mail and I'll try to answer all of your questions.